Welcome back, Seth Bling here. You are looking at an Atari 2600 emulator that I built in Minecraft. This is vanilla Minecraft. There are no plugins or mods. There aren't even any resource packs. This whole thing runs off of about 2000 command blocks. And you can see them all down here. It's quite a few. All these command blocks run everything. They run the processor. They run the video card that's drawing stuff on the screen. They run this memory system. And they run actual ROMs that would have actually been stored in Atari cartridges. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like later, but the, basically the dirt is zeros and the stone is ones. So here you can see uh, it's rendering the game onto the screen. Now, if you want to see a longer technical video about this, I've recorded one and you can click the annotation on screen and it'll include everything that in this video includes and more. Uh, and it'll really go into depth about what's happening behind the scenes and how this all works. Uh, so what you can see here, it's rendering the Atari 2600 version of Donkey Kong. This may look a little bit different than you're used to because the Atari 2600 was quite a bit simpler than the hardware that was in the arcade machines. Um, so it's a common theme in Atari 2600 games that they, they look generally pretty simple, pretty low quality graphics and often much simpler gameplay. But here we are. Um, you can see there is kind of a scanning electron beam, and if I come a little bit closer, you can see it kind of flying across the screen, drawing pixels to the screen as it goes. Now, this scanning electron beam uh, emulates what would have happened in an actual television, and you can see it's going, well, very slow relative to an actual television. Uh, an Atari 2600 will output 60 frames per second. My emulator outputs 60 frames every four hours. I recorded a little time lapse, a bunch of screenshots. Uh, now, this was recorded before I fixed some bugs, so some of the sprites don't appear in the correct positions, but uh, let me play that for you. After about three minutes, it had drawn the first frame. You can see the number of seconds elapsed on the right-hand side of the screen. There's a weird half sprite that's supposed to be Mario at the bottom of the screen, and the barrel starts rolling. Uh, one hour, about two hours in, I watched an episode of West Wing and forget to take a screenshot. Then about five hours in, I take a nap. Here I spent a couple hours worrying that the barrel is going to roll off the right side of the screen and that the emulator isn't working correctly, but eventually it does start dropping. About 15 hours in, DK drops his second barrel, and here's the final screenshot 18 hours in. So yeah, pretty slow. Something else worth noting is that in my emulator I draw square pixels because of course everything in Minecraft is square, whereas the actual hardware would draw kind of wider pixels. And so this is what it would actually look like on the actual hardware with a real TV, but that's not how I'm drawing it because it's a lot easier to do square pixels. So that's Donkey Kong for Atari 2600. Let's go ahead and load up another ROM. So I'll come over here. I've got a couple cartridges kind of stored and ready to go. So that was Donkey Kong and you can see uh, the cartridge was loaded in down here. This is Space Invaders. So the cool thing about this is this is the actual data that was stored in real cartridges that was used to play these games. So you can see each column of eight blocks here is a single byte. Uh, each cartridge is 256 bytes long by 16 bytes wide. That's four kilobytes. And so as I press this button, look down here and you'll see actually this cartridge is getting copied down into the emulator's memory space. So this big chunk of dirt and stuff uh, is the uh, basically the, the memory that can be addressed by a 6502 processor. And that's the processor that's in an Atari 2600. Uh, it was also the processor in the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, the Apple II, some of the Commodore computers. And so you could actually use this emulator to run some of those games, kind of, but it wouldn't display them correctly because I'm only emulating the video card for the Atari 2600. So you, you can see the first thing that a game does is it clears out RAM. Now, the Atari 2600 had 128 bytes of RAM, and that's why it's so fast to do this. Uh, 128 bytes is that gold block over to here where each column is one byte. The reason I wanted to load up Space Invaders is because one of the really cool things about the memory usage in Space Invaders is you can see it directly drawing the blast shields into memory. Since it needs to keep track of damage to blast shields, uh, you know, because aliens can shoot at it from above. If you look at a blast shield, this is kind of the top of the blast shield. This is the bottom. So aliens can shoot at it from above, and you can shoot at it from below. And it needs to track the damage that has been dealt to the blast shield. And so since we're right here, why not just go ahead and 
edit the memory. There's a lot of emulators that have this feature, but you can just edit memory directly. My emulator has it too. You just have to come kind of break some stone blocks, replace them with dirt blocks, and you're replacing ones with zeros. And so I can actually label each of these blast shields with their number and, <laughs> and I can edit memory directly. And this is just like a really cool demonstration of how, how data is actually stored in a computer and how it's actually used. So let me come back up here and we'll start to see the actual game Space Invaders being drawn. It's going to be drawing the title screen because I haven't pressed any buttons. In fact, I don't even have a controller hooked up to this whole emulator. So I have no way of pressing any buttons. But if I press escape, there's so much going on. Sometimes I just have to let the game catch up. So, okay, it started to draw. These are two numbers. These are like, I think, the game modes for player one and two or something like that. And now we can see it just start to draw the aliens as well. Uh, there's six aliens per row in this in this version of the game, and um, some of the feet are cut off. So my emulator is definitely not perfect, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the part where it's actually drawing the blast shields. All right, so the game is finished drawing uh, basically all the aliens, and now it's gonna start drawing the blast shields pretty soon here. Again, I'll have to pause now and then to let it kind of catch up. Um, but yeah, so as it's drawing the blast shields, it will kind of pull this data from memory that we modified and since it sees that these bits are missing it's going to draw them as basically transparent it'll just draw the background color where, where those would be and now if the alien shot more from above it would cause more damage and you'd start to see more pixels missing from these blast shields but uh, it's a pretty cool demonstration I think of just how the memory system works and just how easy it is to modify it in a moment. It's going to draw the player over here somewhere. I think yeah So here's the ship that actually shoots upwards um, So yeah, so there there you go. There's space invaders. There's there's memory editing The last thing I want to show you is pac-man So I'll go ahead and uh, and and press the button for pac-man and then I'll show you what pac-man looks like So here is pac-man for the Atari 2600. It is widely regarded as being one of the worst ports to the Atari it only had a single ghost. All the pellets are these little dash thingies rather than circles. Um, this game kind of was partially responsible for the great video games crash of 1983. And nobody wanted to make or buy video games for about three years until the NES came out. Anyway, still wanted to show you that it does work. It can load in that, that cartridge ROM data and it still renders it, albeit very slowly. Now, if you want to try this for yourself, play around with it, whatever, there is a world download in the video description. Again, all you have to do is download the world, load it up in Minecraft 1.11, and it, it'll just work. So download it, try it out for yourself. There's the three ROMs that I showed you in this video. I also have included an MC Edit filter that you can use to import your own ROMs. Uh, any ROM that is exactly four kilobytes. If it's any more or less than four kilobytes, it won't work. But you can import other ROMs, and I've tried a few other ROMs. Some of them work okay, some of them don't really. <laughs> um, but yeah, try it out for yourself. I don't know if anybody has ever made an emulator within another video game before. Uh, I certainly haven't seen one. So I'm very proud of what I've done, and I'm really glad I got a chance to share it with you. I really hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.